Now let the beat ride. Welcome to the sports edition of the High Chicago Podcast. How's everyone doing today? Doing Sean, good. You specifically, how are you doing oh. today? It's Kobe's birthday, bro. I know, I know. Uh, t- today and tomorrow are going to be rough ones for your boy. You know what I'm saying? Kobe would have been 42 today. Rest in peace to the legend. Um, I'm all right. I've been thinking about some of my favorite Kobe moments. And uh, one of my favorite ones of all time, real quick, is just his last game. Uh, that April 2016, where he dropped that 60 points. Let the Lakers to a comeback W. Uh, super unexpected that he was going to drop 60. They let him shoot. Yep. Um, and uh, I was shocked the way the whole thing played out. But, yeah. Uh, today and tomorrow going to be rough for your boy. How about you, JV? Did you happen to see the little Nike commercial that was uh, narrated by Kendrick Lamar? No, I can't wait to see it, though. Everybody's been talking about it on Twitter this morning. I didn't get a chance to uh, see it just yet, but uh, definitely representing the Lakers today. I got my Lakers bag <laughs> right here. Shout out to the Kuzma family. Um, oh my god <laughs> but yeah i got a chance to see uh kobe's last game in uh chicago at the time i was covering derrick rose and i also got a chance to see kobe's last game in new orleans it was great to just to see the you know the the kobe tour the farewell tour and yes uh, like i said to sean before it's just crazy 2020 has been terrible ever since his death in January. yeah uh, make sure that you got some tissues when you uh, watch that video, though, man. Okay, it a, it'll get you a little teary eyed. I'm sure and it I, will. I, Kobe is forever missed. Uh, I do remember watching that game. I actually missed work the next morning because it was so late. Oh, and shit. so that was one thing I remember was like, "Oh, this is amazing." They're really going to let him shoot the entire time. Yeah. Like, That's fantastic, man. It was fucking lit, bro. And one of my biggest regrets in life is never seeing Kobe play live. That one um, me too. And that's, that's just sucks. But JV, shout out to you for being able to see that a couple times, but it's dope. Yeah. Right. But we're going to hit on something. Uh, we're going to keep it serious for a second. Uh, the Messiah Jury film or video. So last, for people who don't know, last year when the Toronto Raptors won the NBA championship, Messiah Jury, the team president of the Toronto Raptors, came down from the stands to try to get to the court to get with his team and celebrate winning a championship. It's the biggest event that can happen in sports is winning a championship. Mm -hmm. And he was approached by an Alameda County police officer and Alan Strickland. Let's Alan Strickland. Make sure I get the name. Alan Alan Strickland. Strickland. (laughs) Alan Strickland. And uh, what happened, what uh, transpired from there wasn't really on video. Only thing that was on video was what happened after the situation. And what had ended up transpiring after that was that they went into they went and tried to sue Alan Strickland specifically tried to sue Messiah Jury for pushing him. Now, a video was released a few days ago mm-hmm. that showed that Alan Strickland was the one who perpetrated the entire incident by pushing mm-hmm. him. And while Messiah Jury was trying to show his credentials, he pushed him a second time, which mm-hmm. led to the shove back by Messiah Jury. Now, I want to get your feelings on this specifically, JV, as a black human being who also yeah. works in the media and has had to show his credentials at certain events. Man, it's, it's so unreal because when I saw the body cam footage uh, just the other day, you could see him digging into his jacket, getting mm-hmm. ready to display his credential. And if, and if you ever covered a game, you know, yeah, they always say have your credential display. But a lot of times, especially if you're one of those uh, people that's dressed up with the student stuff like that, you might have it on your belt loop. You might have it on around your neck and it's kind of inside your suit jacket. So it's never like a name tag, if you will. But you do mm-hmm. display it when when that time comes. And so he was walking down. And he also had like, you know, looked like he was had some other people, you know, with him as well. And he was, you know, putting his hand out and the guy, you could hear the guy saying, get back. And he was like trying to show like his credential, like I belong here. Like I can really walk around this entire mm-hmm. arena, go into the locker rooms if I want to. Like, he, you know, he got all access being the team president and all. And to see him get pushed. Not once, but then twice. And you can see the other guy like, whoa, 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 calm down, bro, calm down. Like, you know, trying to explain Mm -hmm. what's going on. It just shows you again that no matter how high you may be in, Mm -hmm. uh, in life, you can be the president 
of a NBA team at an NBA arena. Granted, it was the Warriors arena, but that doesn't yeah. matter. It's still the no. it's still the NBA, right. and you're still treated like a like a less than. And I just thought that that was so unfortunate because, again, I've dealt with security and police officers all the time in, in various arenas, including that one. Mm-hmm. And I and and you know again you know you just show your credential they look at it and they be like okay cool and then you go on about your your way but there are some uh, stadiums that are very funny like that and I remember the first games I covered out in Oakland before they moved to Ch- the Chase Arena uh, they were always really funny acting they didn't even let us mm-hmm. be courtside like we would be in Chicago when I was covering the pool so it's just very unfortunate but again it just shows he lied but then the video comes out. Now yeah. we see the and truth, and, exactly and, and it's just a small microcosm of what our society is like uh, dealing with law enforcement in the black community. Yeah. Sean, do you feel like the incident was racially charged? Oh, clearly mm. racially charged, right? Uh, you got a black man trying to get onto the court, right? Um, and he's immediately stopped, right? Now, I'm sure people try to get on the court all the time, but the fact that, again, like JV mentioned, he's grabbing, you can see his credential yep, coming out of his jacket. Up. You see it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and for him to be stopped and then told to get back and then pushed twice uh, is out of control. Not only is that part out of control for me, it was the lie and the attempted cover up, yeah. too. Right. So Alan Strickland said that uh, Ujiri assaulted him. He mm-hmm. said that he suffered injuries to his body uh, yeah. and his health. He said that uh, the incident caused him uh, emotional and mental pain um, because of him being physically assaulted by Ujiri. And the fact that the law enforcement had his back mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, attempted to help him not necessarily cover it up, right? Because there was no footage at the time, mm-hmm. but they saw the footage. Yep. I'm not a cop, so I don't really know how the body cam footage works when it comes to viewing it. But I assume somebody in that uh, office absolutely saw what happened, told the higher ups, and they basically ignored the fuck out of it as if we weren't ever going to see this footage. I don't think that was actually what they were going for was that the footage would probably never be released. But we know in situations like this where there is body cam footage, that footage does eventually get out and it does display the truth. I mean, I'm sorry. I just don't understand like why police officers don't like just own it. Like if I was an mm-hmm. officer and I pushed the president, let's say partially it was racially charged, but I'd be so mad. <laughs> that's true <laughs> whatever <laughs> but the point that i'll make it is if i was an officer let's say i was just really salty the fact that the golden state warriors lost let's say it didn't have anything to do with race i'm just salty that the warriors lost if i didn't know that that was the president and i pushed him and i was being that hard cop if you will once i learned what had happened i would have been like oh my bad like like, like let's like you will clear this up before this hit the airways i'm sorry bro i'm mad you know the warriors like you i would have played that off mm-hmm. to the t but then to try to act like he was assaulted act like he has so has suffered all this emotional pain it was just ridiculous and like you say here we go the body cam a year later showing it off mm-hmm. and it's like mm-hmm, there we go and that's why i think it was racially charged because if it wasn't he could have probably played it off the way that you said jv or at least owned up to it the way you said exactly. right yeah fair, fair. this is a black man um i think that he said i can get away with this shit let me just figure out how right and it sucks mm-hmm. for Ujiri because that was probably the pinnacle of his professional career yep. yeah for right sure. and it's always gonna be marred by this incident exactly mm-hmm. and to me and that that sucks right and again it's because he was black that's the only logical explanation yeah, yeah, it's the only thing that makes sense. And uh, Doc Rivers had come out and said that there was even more to that body cam footage that we weren't even able to see. Because I don't know about you guys, the footage I saw was maybe about a minute long or like 40 mm-hmm. something seconds. It, was, it yeah. wasn't the longest amount of footage, but Doc Rivers said that there was so much more in that footage that we didn't actually get to see that wasn't actually released to the public. So that kind of that kind of thing like sort of scares me. It's like what more was happening before this situation. Like and shout out to Kyle Lowry for, for trying to grab Ujiri yeah. um, and bring him to the court and try to turn, turn the situation around into a positive note. But hell, even if that's me, bro, I'm still going to be like thinking about what's going on, replaying that shit in my head. I couldn't really enjoy mm-hmm. the championship the way I would have if the incident never would have went down. But that, exactly. that's just me. Yeah, yeah, I feel that. I'm, I'm yeah. with you on that. I'm glad to see that you uh, you giving up your Kyle Lowry hate, man. <laughs> right. So Kyle Lowry, the person is solid. Kyle Lowry, the player, different conversation. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that. Oh my god! And but I do want to actually talk about the statement released by the Warriors president. So okay. I'm wondering, 
is this the first time he's hearing of this incident? Was it the first time he's seeing anything about this incident? Because he could have released this same statement a year ago. So what exactly understand. did what exactly did he say? You got the statement? Said, exactly? Hold on, let me pull this up real quick. Okay. And this is uh, what's his name? Jacob? Uh, uh, no, it's um, uh, no, Jacob is the I believe the team owner. Uh, it's Welt something Welt. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, Rick Welt. That's his okay. name. He said to my personal and professional friend Messiah Jury. I am heartbroken seeing the video of what should have been the happiest professional moment of your life. It's hard to watch and know all that's world around you in the aftermath. So I'm wondering if he maybe reached out to him immediately after the incident or if he literally hadn't said anything up to this point. So I, I feel like there should be some sort of accountability there because it's in happening in his team stadium. You should reach out to him after finding out that an incident happened. And if you didn't make it public, I apologize. But I just feel like a year later sort of seems too late. I, I agree with that. Like you said, we, we don't really know what happened behind the scenes. But you're right. If this is his first time actually publicly or actually just speaking on it in general, yeah, that's, that's very unfortunate. Because, again, you know, you see this man pulling out his credential, showing who he is. And even if he wasn't supposed to be there, that's not the way he could. The police officer could have easily said, hey, man, no, you know, you, you know, this restricted area. All right, cool. You know what I'm saying? But to mm -hmm. sit there and push something, get back, you know, and all of that. And it's just like yeah. it wasn't even a tense situation. It shouldn't even been a tense situation no. in that regard. I mean, look, the, the Warriors were losing. So half the Warrior fans were probably leaving anyway. Oh, so yeah. it's like, so it's <laughs> like, you know, come on, man. It's just unfortunate. And I don't know, so I don't, I don't know all the facts to say whether he should be accountable for it or not, right? I don't know if he saw the shit prior or if anybody brought it to his attention prior. Mm -hmm. uh, if they did, then yeah, he should have done his due diligence to check the facts. But if this is also his first time seeing it, then I think he did the right thing by releasing that statement. Mm -hmm. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair enough. All right. So we're going we're gonna to transition to something a little lighter because okay. I know we've been a little dark to start this whole episode. But let's talk about the playoffs. And what's transpired so far? And a matter of fact, let's actually go back to both me and Sean's sleeper picks. You know, East wanna... sleepers or West sleepers? Let's go with both because I don't think either one's really doing well. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. <laughs> that's terrible. That's terrible. I'm mad that y'all got sleeper picks that's not doing well at all. Oh yeah, but my so my, my biggest beef is that Sean's sleeper was the second seed in the East. So That's fine. Let's, let's move past them. Let's go past that. Because so I want to talk about the Nuggets. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> I want to talk about the 76ers when y'all ready. Uh, we can start the, let's start there. Start the Sixers. No, what? let's start with the Sixers. That's let's fine. start with we're the playing. Sixers. Because that's the most play. disappointing team. You can yeah. talk about anybody else, but in my opinion, the 76ers are the most disappointed team. And, and this is why. Let me walk you guys through this. <laughs> With Brett, this is the end of the Brett Brown era. Let me just Almost put that so out there. Me. I mean, Almost you so know, it was, on, it was on the Philly, it was on Philly.com this morning. Let me, let me put this out here. Brett Brown came into the Philadelphia 76ers with a terrible team. They were 19 and uh, 63 back in that 13, 14 era, right? And what did what did Hickey tell everybody? Trust, trust the, the process. process. Trust the process. Sir. The yes, process sir. was trusted so much so they went from 19 to 63 to 13, 14 season to 52 and 30 in the 17, uh, and 17, 18 season, right? They lost in the Eastern Conference semifinals. All right, no biggie. First big playoffs debut since uh, what? Uh, 2011, 2012 season. So, okay, cool. Let's run it back. They run it back again. Similar record, only uh, lost one extra game um, and won one less game. Obviously, that's the same thing. Went back to the Eastern Conference semifinals and couldn't do it. So, everybody mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, no worries. We'll try it again. What's going on this year? And, Sean, I know this is your sleeper team, and I get it. Oh, no, wrong. no, no, this, oh, this is Aaron's wrong. sleeper team. Oh, my, Aaron, oh, my bad. My fault. Yes. Let me, let me, watch let me, the let me. episodes. Make sure you watch the episodes, Jay. My bad. That's <laughs> on me. That's on me. I'll take that. Let me throw it to you, Aaron. What's going on with the 76 I don't understand. Well, what's I, going on with them? <laughs> I, had, I had one thing in my mind when it came to this matchup. Joel Embiid. It was that Joel Embiid could try to lift this team as much as he could. And let's be honest right now. He's the best player in this series, but it doesn't fucking matter. No, it doesn't. Because he's not getting the help from the rest of his team. Tobias mm -hmm. Harris, who I thought would be the guy, the man's averaging fucking 14 points on 33% shooting. He has been awful. Oof. 
Well, the fact that you thought he would be the guy is dumb on your part. Go ahead. The guy has averaged 20 points since 2017. Hey, Tobias Harris. Tobias 20. I mean, fuck, that's more than 14. And it was was on like, it's on 47, sorry, 47% shooting. He has regressed quite a bit in these playoffs and shrunk. And it's basically up to Joel and B, Josh Richardson, and Shake fucking Milton to try to lift (laughs) this team up as much as they can. And it's not working. Even if Tobias went from 14 to 20, they're still not winning any of these damn games. Well, missed missed shots create opportunities for the other team. So you take back those missed shots because that's the biggest issue with him. It's not that he's averaging 14. It's that he's averaging it on 33% shooting. No, the biggest issue for the Sixers is they don't have Ben Simmons. I mean, yes. Let's let's call call it what it is, right? But you were dumb (laughs) for picking the Sixers knowing damn well Ben Simmons was out. That was dumb. JV, I do you agree? Well, I, I agree. I would say this. <laughs> They're going to go from trust the process to 3-2-1 Cancun because uh, they <laughs> – I don't see Boston losing this game, and I know this is pretty important, um, but right now Boston is up 39-38 in the second quarter, even though Philadelphia outscored them 32-27 to in the first. So if Boston – Jay, you brought up – my bad. Yeah. I want to talk about Brett Brown because you brought up Brett Brown, right? And he's probably going to be fired, no problem. So yeah. I read a report today talking about he's the one – that didn't want Jimmy Butler to come back. That's dumb. Because he couldn't handle Jimmy's ego, and Jimmy was too outspoken, right? So you take an all-star, a potential all-NBA player, you get rid of him, right? And then you pay Tobias Harris, was it, uh, five years, 180 mil? This man's that's making a 36 mil a year. That's more than Dame. That's more than CJ. That's more than AD. That's more than Giannis. And you <laughs> think that him being your second-best player – or second best scorer, I should say, it right? Supposed to be. Yeah. Was going to take you guys past the semifinals to the finals to the championship? No, because you got always Kareem. Kareem Embiid, you got yeah. can't shoot Ben Simmons, you got oh that's Al, For- Al Horford, and Who's then you got over absolutely not Harris. even a part of this damn team right now. Al no, Horford, no. terrible, terrible. Can, the can, can, I, shit. can I do my favorite Brett Brown impersonation? Sure, we I couldn't handle Jimmy Butler, so I thought Tobias Harris <laughs> was going to be the guy, and clearly. <laughs> I gotta be finding me a new job. I'll be the new head coach. They, they should have. They should have chose Jimmy. They should have chose Jimmy over I'm, Tobias. Brett, Brett, yeah, Brett, crazy. Brett Brown to the Bulls. I'm calling it. God no. Oh, that's right. They still don't have a coach, huh? They don't have a coach. I mean, we just fired Boylan less than a week ago, so yeah. we're we'll get there. Yeah, <laughs> plenty, gonna, plenty of time. Plenty of time. It's gonna be a revolving door. Brett Brown is gonna get fired in Philly after tonight, and he's gonna be introduced to Chicago later next week. I'm putting my money. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he'd be better than a lot of the coaches you've had, besides yeah. Tibbs. So. Right. Well, yeah, so I don't care about who he had. I care about the future. Brett Brown is not the future. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just I'm throwing out there. I want I want M. A. Udoka or I want Adrian Griffin. Um, those are my top two candidates. If the Bulls pick a, a new fresh coach, get Alfred Gentry from New Orleans. Oh, that's out of here. I'm good. <laughs> Gentry is a little old. Yeah. <laughs> um, can we talk about the Nuggets? Yeah, let's yeah. talk about the Nuggets. Let's talk, let's the talk nuggets. about the Nuggets. Let's talk about the Nuggets. Sean, the fact that you thought a guy who's <laughs> built like a seven-foot me was going to carry this team. <laughs> like a seven-foot me. <laughs> was going to carry this team past Donovan Mitchell and Mike Conley. It's kind of crazy. And the Stifle so, so, Tower. It's, it's only 2-1. It's only 2-1. Let's get that clear. Right. Um, no, 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 no. Let's, let's, let's have context here. What happened in the last game, Sean? Bro. They got absolutely demolished. So Mike Conley went off and saw uh, the birth of his kid. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying, and then came back and smacked a career high seven threes uh, <laughs> so against man. Denver. So in my mind, right, I'm gonna chalk that one up as luck. This man was on a high from having the birth of his child. So so wait a minute. So JV, right after the birth of your child, did you go back and do anything great? No, not like that. Probably not. Right, <laughs> not <laughs> like that. So I'm gonna just chalk that one up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but also they're they're allowing 18 threes a game. You're not going to beat anybody when you allow, you allow 18 made threes a game. That's fair. That's You're fair. not. That's Denver true. can't score in the fucking post because the, the Stifle Tower is locking them up. Mm-hmm. And their perimeter defense is dog shit. Obviously, I just mentioned the 18 threes they're allowing per game. Mentally, they're not in it, bro. They look slow. The energy's not there. Um, they're not hustling back on defense. So this is not the regular season nuggets that I saw. I don't know who we're seeing right now, but Spider Mitchell, Gobert, and Conley uh, are running circles around these dudes. <laughs> it's embarrassing. I-, I wonder with this with the success that the Jazz are having, is this going to bring Donnie and Rudy closer together? Because you know, after Rudy gave oh, everybody the coronavirus, I hate when you like, like 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 give people nicknames that 
they don't have. No one calls them Donnie. Well, yeah, Donnie. Them, well, first of all, when you know them personally, they call him Spider. But I got Donnie. I just no wonder. Okay. <laughs> He's gonna keep going with this shit. Let me text Donnie. I just was wondering if you know that relationship is getting better after you know Rudy accidentally gave people the Rona. I was just wondering. <laughs> I'm just playing, Rudy. Just What's playing. wrong with you? I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But I was just wondering: Are they gonna be best friends again? Yeah. How you doing? But yeah, it's pretty bad, Sean. When you choose a team that should be a favorite in their first round right. playoff matchup as your sleeper, and they're losing that matchup. Now again, they'll they'll win today, so it'll be two two. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just not so certain, man. It's not. So I mean, certain. so I just I can't just I can't jump ship. No, I mean, no. So, so. look, I'm hoping the Philadelphia wins today. I'm honestly. <laughs> so. You think this? Well, you think this might be like a rebirth for the Sixers, huh? Well, no, maybe. maybe. Speaking of Probably rebirths, uh, can we talk about Bron and them? Oh, yeah. After that game, after that game one disaster, yeah, they got uh, coming back from one. playoff. Braun is back. Wait, can hey, I even a dog? Can I ask a question? Do we really think? And no disrespect, no shade to uh, CJ or Dame, but do we really think that CJ and Dame were going to beat AD and LeBron? Like I know people were talking about like Dame and CJ, like they were like always find, finding themselves in these elimination type games, and they were doing great things like they did against the Grizzlies and everybody else. But do we really think that they were going to beat? The Lakers, like, do we really think LeBron was going to go out like this? No, no, no. no. Well, so they had, they had a chance, oh, but uh, Ch- Ch- well, Charles Barkley said if the Blazers won Game One, they're going to sweep the Lakers. So yeah, people really thought. No, Chuck gets paid to people. say stupid stuff. That's no, not people. No. Chuck gets what paid. You mean? To stupid stuff. <laughs> that's, that's the wrong people. So. That's the wrong people. <laughs> you got the right people, and then you got the wrong people. That's the very wrong people. <laughs> he said shit for shock value. Come on, right, uh, exactly. So I, I was nervous. I'm not going to front, especially, especially after game one. So I was nervous going into it, and then after game one, I was like, oh, shit. Like, these boys are a problem in the backcourt, right? Uh, mm-hmm. But then their defense turned it up a notch. You know what I'm saying? They out here uh, dealing with Dame with a sprained finger. Dame looked good last night, though. Dropped 34. Mm-hmm. He did. Um, but playoff Braun is in full effect. Danny Green stopped robbing the Lakers, so thank you for that. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> boy. yeah. Yeah. Yes, God. Damn, bro. Well, it was it was tough for at one point. I mean, it used to be a time where when Danny was on the court, I would just be tweeting Daniel Richard Green. Like I was afraid to even tweet. Like I mean, every time he was shooting, he would miss. Yeah, exactly. He's bad. And, yeah. I, and I'll say this right: if the Lakers missed free throws in the next round the way they did yesterday, then OKC or Houston's going to give them fits because they missed about thirteen or fourteen free throws last night. Mm-hmm. Um, now, mind you, they took about forty compared to Portland's ten. I want to say, yeah, it was yeah. it was outrageous that 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 uh, balance, that disparity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but again, against a better team, a better team would make them pay yeah. for all those missed free throws. For sure, for sure. I mean, I would just uh, say this real quick. You know, watching LeBron over the last several years since I've been covering the league, it's just hard to bet against LeBron. That's just me. And so, though it, I know, it has been. you know, Dame and CJ, they came in with a lot of tenacity. They came in with a lot of fire. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize his smog said that. <laughs> you, you saw that? That's okay. Talk about the world's best boss. Come on now. Um, <laughs> I'm like, well, who, who bought that? Clearly, nobody on the he show. Bought it for shout, out, shout out to my employee. My employee, Sonia, hooked me up. You know no, you bought that for yourself. Shut up. You have to be somebody at the phone <laughs> company. But anyway, I was just going to say, you can't really bet against LeBron. And LeBron, he looked so focused after that second quarter. I think uh, Portland was leading by four. And he walked off the court doing this. <sighs> I knew LeBron was coming back. And let me tell you, Sean and Alan, Aaron, he came back and he did his thing. And Carmelo was finally making shots. And it looked really good. But at the end of the day, when it mattered the most, LeBron James did what he does best, and he closed out the game in the fourth quarter. That's exactly. all I got to say. Yeah, no, don't bet against LeBron James. You're a fucking fool if you, uh, you yeah. bet Never. against LeBron. Never do. Ever. But also, shout out to Melo last night. Melo uh, put up a dub. He did. Melo went back in time. Yeah, that third quarter me? looked real good. It looked like vintage Melo in the third yeah. quarter, man. That's it. Smacking in range shots over hit, LeBron. Hit hit those near ranges, yeah. getting on the elbow and just turning around. But when you're Portland and you're depending on garbage mellow, and I say it. You, what you call him, garbage? He's sure not did. garbage. He's just <laughs> older. That's all it is. Sure He's did. just older. <laughs> when you're depending on garbage mellow to oh lead your God. team, you in a bad situation. 
Whatever. And before before we go, guys, I, I want to definitely make sure we hit on the pick that both me and Sean sort of hit off the park, and that's Toronto. Even though you disrespect the Kyle Lowry, Toronto is absolutely destroying. What is what is what is it with you and this weird obsession with Kyle Lowry, bro? Like, tell the people what's going on with that. Kyle I, Lowry I like has that. a championship, does he not? He does. Who's okay. Your fa- who's your favorite Those player? Non coach. Shut your ass up. The first one. <laughs> don't, 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 don't disrespect him like that. He's an all star. All right. Okay. <laughs> the man. The man's a fucking baller. All right. You said who's my favorite player besides Kobe? In, in the current in the league currently. Please don't say AD. No, uh, it's Derrick Rose. But, is he in the uh, league still? No, I'm just playing. He is. Yeah, he is. He is. So I'm, I'm rocking with Derrick Rose until he's, <laughs> till he's done. You feel me? Going okay. to the Pistons was a mistake, but yeah, I'm riding with Derrick Rose. So you got something to say about Derrick Rose? No, I mean, he's I'm, an MVP, okay. but he so. don't got a championship. Does he have a championship? No, nah, because he's not jumping on bandwagons. You feel me? Is he could have won the Lakers. You know what I'm saying? He wants somewhere he's going to get some playing time. I would okay. but Kyle Lowry won one on the team that he's been playing for for the past six years. So like Kyle Lowry sucks. Okay, whatever. Before before you go, Aaron, can I give a shout out to my favorite player on the Toronto Raptors? Wait, 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 hold up. Don't Is tell it me. Fred it's Van Vliet. Fred Shut up, Fred Van, Van Vliet. Vliet. Shut up. Let me talk about Fred Van Fleet for a second. Rockford, oh. Illinois, very old. If we have Chicago, you say- what? Shut up, man. Y'all know what? That's fine. Shout out to my <laughs> boy, Freddie. Freddie, I'm but no, he's leading the same. He goes to the nickname <laughs> stuff. Like, man, I need you to stop. Man. You don't know these people. You don't you know, know these people. <laughs> he's leading the score right now. Hey, so, what do you mean? Hey, Freddie and shout out, for, shout out to him, though. Shout he's out to Freddie. He's leading the score right now. And shout out to my boy, Freddie. We're going to be back to the 815. We're going to kick it when he brings back the championship again this year. And also, Kyle Lowry is leading the team in uh, rebounds. So, yeah, for what that's worth. The man six feet, six feet even out here leading the team in rebounds. Oh, what what is he averaging per game? Just curious. Sixteen points. No, no, I'm sorry, rebounds per game. Eight point seven. Yeah, that's horrible. What, where's Serge Ibaka at? Where's Siakam si- well, at? Where's I mean, all at? They got they got three people averaging over eight rebounds a game. Like, what do you want from them? Like, right, come on. I want them to lead the team and not Kyle Lowry. Oh. So this is just more disrespect just to Toronto in general. No, no. So again, you you guess at Toronto like they're playing somebody relevant right now. Let's talk next, after the next round after they get ran by Boston. They won't get ran talk. by Boston. Calm down. They won't get ran by Boston. They won't. All right, calm down. All right. Anyway, guys, that's basically all we have time for today. This <laughs> <laughs> bullshit ass. This bullshit ass conversation disrespecting the Raptors, the champion, the world champion Raptors until. Mm. Obviously, they lose again. Right. Put some respect on their name, Sean. Exactly. Well, stop air fried. You like that cop did Messiah? Oh. Oh. We're going to get canceled. We're going to get, we just get canceled. canceled. We just got canceled. Man. What's wrong See? with you? And, and you know what? Aaron, it's anyway. normally me. It's normally me. That it is me. normally you, man. All right. Oh, All right. Oh, shit. Anyway, before we go, you guys have any <laughs> parting thoughts? JV, start with you. I just want Freddie to get another ring. Because they need to put some respect on my homeboy, Freddie. I want Donnie and uh, Rudy to get their brotherhood back together. And um, I really don't want to see the Lakers win. But if they do, I'm going to make sure I put a nice little asterisk by this championship. And call it back. Oh, oh, my God. God. Oh, here you go. So I just want to make sure if anybody else wins, it's going to be looked at like courageous. If the Lakers win, we're just going to say, oh, that was during the Rona year. And it didn't really matter. So it's just if the Lakers win. Mind you, okay, you have a Lakers backpack. And you just shout out Kyle Kuzma at the beginning of the show. But you're yeah. saying that Kyle Kuzma wins the championship. Your boy. It doesn't count. Have that same energy. Wait, no, 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 no. Because see, wait, wait. Because we got no. Because we no. Championship won't come. No, let me be honest. Let me be honest. Wait, wait, wait. Now, if Kyle win the championship, you already know I'm gonna be like, "Ooh, Kuz, man, you K square." You know I'm gonna do all that. But if everybody else on the Lakers win. I'm going to say. Wait, you, you realize that if he wins, that's that's he wins, like, oh, they win. That's it's the a team. dumbest thing I've ever it's heard. A team. <laughs> that's the dumbest <laughs> thing anyway, I've ever heard. That was my thought. <laughs> Aaron, close the show. I have anyway, no final thoughts. JV, Sean, JV's Sean thoughts are done. I'm done, done here. Right. I'm done here. Yeah, before we go, I want to make sure everybody knows that Milwaukee lost their first game to Orlando <laughs> and just is. won the last two, but Ugh. that's that's really scary. JV, we got to talk off air, bro. favorites. No, we, we gotta good. talk about it, bro. Anyway, till <laughs> next time, guys. Let us know how you feel about the show. This is High Jesus. Chicago Sports Edition for JV, for Sean. I'm Aaron. Peace out. Peace.